Mr. Peter Bayoukou-Conte, thank you for your it is an honor for us to join the Institute of Cultural Diplomacy in Berlin. We would like to ask you a few questions in order to get the thoughts and opinions in, in some prominent issues. Yes. Well, the first one will be connected with cultural diplomacy, yes. and I would like to ask you, what does cultural diplomacy mean to you? In what way do you practice this cultural diplomacy? Well, uh, as far as I'm concerned, cultural, cultural diplomacy simply means those cultural values that each nation has, mm -hmm. you know, how they can be preserved and how they can be developed and how they can also serve as an exchange to other cultures, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the area of um, promoting peace and stability and uh, empowering people uh, from all over the world so that at, at the end of the day we create a kind of the world that is a one family in a world whereby uh, nations can be judged not by the color of their skin but by their character based on peace, on respect for humanity and on development generally. Another question. Uh, late December 2030, the Ministry of Tourism and Cultural Affairs organized a festival in ta uh, Township Kabbalah. In Kabbalah, yeah. indeed, yes. Uh, what was the main objective of the festival in terms of promoting the local culture and okay. fostering well, tourism? Yes, uh, the thing is that in Sierra Leone, like in most parts of Africa, uh, culture is at risk of, of disappearing. Mm -hmm. You know, because with the invasion of Western culture, which is largely being guided by the means of communication, mm -hmm. people think that uh, to go around with uh, African clothes or to uh, use African uh, costumes generally as if it is primitive. The message that I wanted to send is that uh, no, we have to celebrate what is still left of us, you know, not only in terms of our music, our dance, but also in terms of our costumes or whatever is unique of Sierra Leone. So it's like revitalizing the cultural identity of Sierra Leone as a means of awakening people, as a means of people as in developing our cultural heritage, but also as a means of attracting tourists. So that was the essence, not only international post tourists, but also local tourists. And thank God we had a huge number of uh, visitors, both from Sierra Leone and you know, uh, uh, from outside Sierra Leone. So it was, it was a success. So. Earlier in your talk, you spoke uh, about some ways that Sierra Leone is currently trying to um, develop the creative industry. Yes. Um, what do you think are some of the biggest opportunities and challenges to do the same to grow uh, sustainable tourism in Sierra Leone? Well, as I outlined uh, before, um, in Sierra Leone, though we, of course, we have come up with a, a copyright act, you know, but again, we are trying to enforce it and there can be some challenges mm. but also um, you will have other challenges that have to do with infrastructure and uh, with infrastructure because we have insufficient infrastructure in the country and uh, those who are also working in the sector most times they are not very well trained so you have to build their capacity and access to finance is also a challenge so these are the challenges that we are, that we face, but we are not only working on finding answers to them, you know, uh, asking government, but also we are looking elsewhere for support to, to see how we can address these challenges, because we know that it can be of a great benefit to us if we address these challenges. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, uh, next question will be connected with national branding and tourism. Yes. And I would like to ask, uh, how can Sierra Leone better promote itself abroad? Well, already we have started. Uh, we are using all possible instruments or means to rebrand ourselves. Not only designing websites, you know, but also engaging the media, the biggest, of course, television companies like CNN, BBC, as a Zilli and the others to let them know that uh, we are now very peaceful and very stable and we are a very interesting country to visit, to come and spend, you know, vacation. But also we are uh, meeting top operators in Europe, in, France, in Germany in particular, and in Italy, and of course in England, to tell people that um, 
Uh, it's time for people to go back to Sierra Leone as it used to be in the 50s up to the end of the 80s when Sierra Leone was the center of tourism in West Africa. So we are, we are on the move. We are using all available uh, means, not only diplomatically, but also uh, informally to ensure that uh, people know where we are in terms of our peace and in terms of what we have to offer uh, from a tourism point of view. Um. Uh, which uh, ways do you believe a sustainable uh, tourism can contribute to your country? Well, the tourism that we are really interested in, as I said in my um, presentation, is the um, ecotourism. It's a tourism that will um, tourism that will be built first of all by us local people and take into, uh, into consideration the importance of our nature, of our castles, slave castles, and so that at the end of the day, we can protect what we have and then be mindful of promoting mass tourism. We don't want to be disfigured culturally um, by inviting you know, thousands and thousands of tourists. We are more keen in uh, in a selective, if you want, in a selective tourism, especially that which has to do with uh, ecotourism, with humanitarian, uh, humanitarian tourism, people call it, you know, whereby um, medical doctors from Europe can go and give some, some services, free services to our people, but also um, working directly with, um, with the local economies, for example, youths that are engaged in um, in the music industry or in arts and crafts, which is really sprouting all over the place. So this for us is, is key, is important. That's where we want to maintain our sustainability um, as, um, as a country that, uh, of course, wants to offer so much to the outside world. Yeah, you mentioned uh engaging the youth with employment. The last question is about youth unemployment. Um, in Sierra Leone, like Liberia, Egypt, many other countries that have had conflicts, and it, the unemployment rate of the youth is a very, very big concern. Um, how do you think the creative industry and the tourism industries can particularly engage uh, youth unemployment as a problem and, and meet that need? Well, really, they, they go side by side. Uh, when tourism goes together with arts and crafts and therefore we have to see how possibly we can encourage youths that are that are good in doing one thing or the other of course as you have said it is a big challenge youth unemployment which is not only a challenge in Sierra Leone but you know uh, globally um, the role of government is to regulate to make it easier for youth to be able to um, to sell their gifts, to be able to tap the best out of their gifts. So we are creating the atmosphere as a government for them to exercise, you know, their talents. And of course, some of them have started making money out of that. Not only in the in the music industry, but also in art, of, uh, uh, you know, uh, arts and craft, and in the entertainment, you know, uh, industry generally. So we have started seeing some signs of, uh, of hope that uh, it could be one of the ways that we could uh, uh, tackle this problem of youth unemployment. It's not only that, of course, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, we don't have to, be, to elude ourselves. The fact of the matter is that uh, to address youth unemployment, you have to think of uh, how to overhaul the educational system, mm -hmm. uh, overhaul the labor system so that uh, they can be given the possibility to be able to to work, to find employment, either on their own or uh, absorbed by government or by other agencies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the strategy is that it'll self help solve employment by boosting those areas right now, but it has to go along with education and bigger, bigger picture goals. That's fundamental. Education is fundamental, even for those who are in the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. Those who are not educated is a big challenge. You know, they can be put out of the market sooner or later.
It's still it's business. So that's why we, as a government, we are trying to restructure our educational system, which, by the way, um, we, we are far ahead in the after, in fact, uh, after, before the war, in fact, they used to call Sierra Leone the Athens of West Africa because we had a very healthy educational system. Mm -hmm. You know, um, many families in West Africa used to send their children to Sierra Leone to study. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, with the war, everything just collapsed. So we want to revamp <coughs> our educational sector, which will be good not only for us as a government, but also for the youth, because it will give them the opportunity to to excel mm -hmm. in different fields. And maybe one last question to tie it into what you first said about the, the expression of traditional identity. Somehow you, some people struggle with that being looked at negatively. Yes. Do you think the government has a responsibility in education to, to address that concern and, and encourage a celebration of a national identity? Or do you think that really has to come from the people well, themselves? Well, it has to come from both. Parties. The fact of the matter is that uh, it's government usually that has to take the, the lead because it's representing the people. It has to regulate. It has to make people know that uh, uh, it's important for us to maintain and preserve and develop our cultural identity, especially those aspects that are positive. And of course, the people have to follow. You see, uh, but again, it's not enough the political will. Mm -hmm. You know, there are so many other aspects that one has to take into account. Uh, education is one, but also you cannot ignore the importance of finance because uh, maintaining one's cultural identity will also require you to spend money to ensure that uh, you, you buy what you're supposed to buy to get your culture alive and moving. You see, so we are using both methods, both government, government role to promote uh, uh, culture, to tell people that don't feel inferior because we are wearing an African clothes, uh, on, but that you should be proud because it's that which unites us as a nation, uh, which makes us different from the others. Uh, it's something that we should celebrate and not be ashamed of as the, unfortunately, the, the British made us to understand or to believe during slavery and the colonialism that uh, Whatever was African was no good, was primitive, was uh, something to throw away. Uh, no, it's not true. Yeah. So we are now trying to see how we can recapture that, uh, that um, kind of uh, negative um, psychological, uh, what, psychological uh, message, if you want. No. Well, I think uh, the plan that you outlined is, is very, very comprehensive for making the right steps to, to, to grow the, the cultural market and scene. So I look forward to seeing what happens in Sierra Leone very much. So thank you very much for your time. It was a great honor and privilege to have you here with us today. Okay. Thank you for speaking with us. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Yes, yes.